Good evening, I'm Mayor George Fuller, and this is my lovely wife, May Lee, and Mesa, Mesa Fuller, is here with us tonight. And uh, we, you know, we wanted to bring you some good news stories that's happening both in our community and surrounding areas. And because, uh, you know, so much bad news right now, right? Every time we turn on the TV and the news, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's talking about death and sickness and infections and the economy and tough stuff. And man, people are, are hurting all over, really, really hurting. Um, but we wanted to bring a little good news and some good news stories to you. And uh, I'm going to read one. I'll start. Okay. I'm going to start with the uh, Carriker family. Mm -hmm. Our family has absolutely loved the extra time together. We've had more time for family meals, conversations, and walk around the neighborhood pond. We've taken time to enjoy nature, flowers, the little ducklings, because we are not in a constant rush to get to the next commitment or activity. In the midst of all the uncertainty, we have also come to treasure the gifts of health and family. Finally, we have learned more about God's faithfulness and goodness as he continues to protect and bless our family and those dear to us. That's the character family. That was sweet. Well, I have one from David E. Huntley that says, I wish to congratulate the Mayor George Fuller and whatever team was assembled from the city of McKinney to assist David Craig of Craig Ranch in the negotiations with the PGA to successfully bring the Byron Nelson Golf Tournament to McKinney, Texas. As a friend of numerous professional golfers back in the 80s and 90s, I know very well what the current players of today will feel about this area and what it has to offer. McKinney area businesses will also benefit tremendously from this decision. Again, congratulations, David E. Huntley. And that was a really cool thing that happened in the midst of all of this. Yeah, it is. And you know, Mayor Brian Lockmiller, um, I always refer to Brian as my mayor. Yes. Uh, he was my mayor for eight years and, uh, and a, a huge inspiration for me. And he played a significant role in David Craig and Miles and, and um, Mark and another David, uh, just a whole group of people, David Brooks as well. Uh, a lot of people from the community came together and pulled that off. So we will have the Byron Nelson here for the next five it's, years. It's crazy. The Byron Nelson, you guys, it's a really big deal. <laughs> it's a big deal. You know, as soon as I walked in the door, my son, 30 years old, hasn't paid attention to anything I've done as mayor. But he knew about that. And the very first thing was, <laughs> are you going to hook me up for tickets? So, like, yeah, I, I'm here. Where you can buy. Yeah, I told I said, well, let me tell you where you can buy. Them. So I want to go to um, Dominic Can uh, Canatelli. And he lives in the villas at Willow Grove, and we are a gated condo community with 157 units. I serve as president of our HOA and board of directors. The board and I instituted social distancing before it became mandatory and closed and locked our amenity center pool. Our community is very close-knit, and here are some of the initiatives our residents have started. Neighbors helping neighbors. This group will do shopping or chores for those who are unable to get out or take care of the issues themselves. That's fantastic. Activities of hope. One resident who is a nurse practitioner volunteered to make masks for anyone free of charge. I'm so proud to be serving on this board with a group of professional, dedicated board members and to be representing this incredible community. And that's from Dominic Canatelli at the Villas of Willow Grove. Okay, that's beautiful. I have one from Kathy Conley. She said, a week ago, my husband fell as he was, drive as he was going down the front steps. He wasn't able to get up by himself. Turns out that his ankle was broken. Oh. A wonderful young couple who had never seen us before were jogging by. They stopped to help him and get him in the house. We're senior citizens. There was no way that I could have gotten him up off the ground. And to add to this happy story, the couple has checked with us several times to see how we're doing. They've even brought us homemade bread for Easter. We're so thankful for these new friends. During the time of uncertainty, there's still much reason to be happy. Kathy Conley. That's and very sweet. That's just, that's what community is all about. And we just, I'm so proud of McKinney because, um, as you know, there's so many people here that are willing to, to do help and to help us. And, you know, we, we, it's easy to, to get caught up in all the rhetoric and the divisiveness and all that. But at the end of the day, situations like this generally bring out the best in people. I haven't seen it every day, but that's what they say. That's <laughs> no, not true. I've seen it. I've a lot. seen it a lot. I've seen not it a here, lot. but everywhere else. So I have one from, here. from Ashley Thon. Okay. Uh, yeah. I work for Next Step Dance in Frisco, Texas. And we've started a sponsorship program for dancers within our studio whose parents are facing hardships due to COVID 19. 
So far, we have been able to support 24 dancers to finish their online training throughout the rest of the season. It has been wonderful and heartwarming to see such a great response and knowing that so many kids are able to continue doing something they love during this unusual time. Thanks, Ashley Thon. Very nice. So I have one that I can um, totally relate to, but you know how it's been crazy uh, to trying to get certain kind of groceries. Yes. You know, it's really something. Well, this woman says it's mm-hmm. Carrie Thompson. I didn't want to brave the grocery store, so I placed an online order. I made a comment in my team meeting that unsalted butter was out of stock. My supervisor texted me the next day saying she found it when she went to the store and she brought it to my house after work. Wasn't oh, that sweet? That's very sweet. And that's from Carrie Thompson. Yeah, Carrie Thompson. Well, and, and you know, we've had to do a lot of online shopping, but now that stores are open, we're going to shop local and support all of our local stores. And we're going to use our distancing and our gloves masks and, and our masks yes. and, you know, the cell six feet apart thing and, you know, it gets kind of awkward Which sometimes. we're not doing right now. Well, because we've been quarantined, quarantined together, together for yeah. a long time. And there's been the desire to be six feet apart <laughs> at times. Yeah. I'm going to read another one. This is Helen Hutton, Executive Director with Baby Booties Diaper Bank, a nonprofit right here in downtown McKinney. We've been loving on and serving our neighbors throughout Collin County weekly since March 14th with COVID-19 emergency pop-ups. In those five weeks, we've distributed over 31,000 diapers, 800 packs of baby wipes, 21,000 period products, 200 meal bags, 150 canisters of infant formula, and four huge boxes of Easter candy to 750 vehicles. We also received some coverage this week on NBC5 DFW with a print article follow-up and a live news clip that you can find on YouTube. Um, Since November 2013, The uh, Baby Booties Diaper Bank has distributed 1.3 million diapers to North Texas babies in need. So, it's so funny that you're, well, not funny that you're reading that, but you know, uh, One Heart McKinney just gave them a grant. And they were in our first rounds, and this is a really wonderful nonprofit, and they really are doing an extreme service to women and families and i'm so proud that uh, that they've made their home here and that they're you know they're doing so well really really well, well speaking of one heart mckinney if you don't know about one heart mckinney you can go to oneheartmckinney.com and oneheartmckinney.com is a is a, a community initiative um, it's business leaders churches nonprofits that have all come together our city manager paul grimes huge huge catalyst in that rick wells um, bruce miller mark thurman lot, lots of people involved and, um, and we've raised nearly $100,000 already mm-hmm. in that initiative, and it goes out to help um, people in the community. We're doing it through the nonprofits who have really learned how to stretch dollars um, the best, so it's been great, and it's good to hear that Good Diapers has been one of those recipients. Baby booty diapers. Baby. What did I say? Good diapers. Good di- well, they're good diapers, <laughs> and that's what I've always said about baby booty diapers. Um, so now we're going to, I'm going to read another one here. We set out a box of sidewalk chalk. For an, in, for an only child that lives down the street and walks with parents in front of the house each day. Here is her cute thank you note. Have a grateful heart, Carrie S. And I'm sure this is going to be put up on the screen. Uh, it says, Dear neighbor, thank you for letting me have the chalk you gave me from 3009, I think. I think that says that. Yeah, maybe so. Something like that. But it's super. That's so cute. Yeah, that's super cute. Super cute. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, that is really cute. Um, this is Sally. Uh, Sally G says, this has been a great opportunity. During this time of social distancing, my four grandchildren learned to ride a bicycle ages six, seven, and nine. And I got to teach three of them. Isn't that cool? I also set up my sewing room to make 600 cloth face masks. Cheers, Sally G. That's so cool. That is that, you know, and that I'm seeing so much of that. So many women out there that are gifted and um, can make masks has just immediately gone into it. And I know one of my friends immediately called and said, "I'm making masks." You know, so, and you know me, I gotta have the cute ones. So, <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's now a part of. I mean, it's a you know, it's an accessory. I've got, yes, it is. I've got one from Thomas D. It says, I volunteer for nonprofit animal rescue passport for paws. Our group rescues animals in the local shelters of DFW area and beyond. This relieves some pressures on the shelters. 
Our rescue then finds local fosters to take care of these animals, usually for two or more weeks, depending upon any medical issues the dog or cat has. Last year, we saved over a thousand lives doing this. Since its inception, we've saved over 2,500. But the cats and dogs are only part of what we save. They also save us. We derive multiple benefits psychologically, such as depression and loneliness, which are prevalent during our long periods of confinement from the virus. That's from Thomas D. And we know all about animals uh, providing a service to us is this mongly beast, Mesa, yes. does that often, <laughs> except she really is afraid of thunderstorms, which I don't quite oh, understand. But when there's yeah. a thunderstorm at night, she is barking oh, um, so incessantly. She's crying and so stressed. It's so sad. But she gets up in bed with this and we spend the whole night just That's telling her awesome. she's okay. <laughs> it's awesome. So I have one that says, um, B. McKinney partnered with Dallas Quesadillas to send 100 meals to the health care workers at Baylor, Scott & White, and McKinney. Uh, hashtag health heroes. No, I think that's Diaz Quesadillas. I think oh, that's it is that. Diaz. Yes, Diaz right. Quesadillas. It's Diaz Quesadillas. Sorry, Dia. Sorry about that. And through a separate community fundraiser, we put over $1,000 directly back into McKinney restaurants. That's awesome. And that's from Cassie. That's so cool. That is really cool. That is cool. I've got one from my uh, from Anna Segura, or Ann Segura, and it says, My local mechanic shop, Burdick Auto, has done repairs on cars for people affected by economic hardship from COVID-19. Uh, Burl Burdick is not the type to toot his own horn, but he has in the past done other things for the community. He and his wife just wanted to pay it forward. Oh, so by the way, that was Earl. <laughs> what did I say? You said Burl. Burl? I took the B from Burdick, <laughs> and I added it to the... To the Earl. Burl. I like Burl. You know, his friends call him Burl, but I understand. You don't know, so you call him Earl. But Burl, I got you, buddy. I have one more. Do you have another one? I don't. Oh, it looks like I get to read the last one. I'm and sorry. You know what? Just, I love this organization. Um, City Church McKinney. Ah, we know City Church well. Um, Carol Wood, Kelly Wood, um, the whole Kelly Jr. Kelly Jr., Jr. the whole Wood family. Moore. City Church, in partnership with McKinney ISD, McKinney ISD, Board of Trustees, you guys are great. Rick McDaniel, Superintendent, you're, you're, you're a great man for all that you're doing right now, um, are delivering 150 meals a day to children in McKinney. 150 meals a day. Extraordinary effort by Carol Hinosa Wood. She goes with that last name hyphen thing, too. Carol Hinosa Wood. Yeah. <laughs> and her family and dedicated team of volunteers. Can I just say one thing? What it's not saying is they're delivering hot meals. Okay. Yeah. But this isn't like, and no, don't get me wrong. I think sandwiches and all that is fantastic. But they are literally giving these kids a hot meal every day, delivering it to their Look doors. Yeah. And um, so um, we're, we're extreme supporters of City Church and what they're doing because they're feeding these children that, that are yeah. not being fed. And they, you know, they're okay. food insecure. Well, share your good story with us by visiting www.mckinneytexas.org forward slash TMSG. Okay, TMSG. Uh, we are featuring stories on Facebook and our e-newsletter each week. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this segment of Share Your Good News Story with Gio and May Lee, or as she calls it, uh, May Lee and the Mayor. Yeah. And this time it is May Lee, the Mayor, and Mesa. So it's really, it's M cubed, M cubed. So, um, well, don't forget, send it in all your stories. We want to hear from you and even the funny ones. And I know someone out there that has a story about a bird, a wild bird that is now practically tamed. So I want you to tell a little bit of your story. And I'd like to tell one last story. Last night we started a puzzle. There were two pieces <laughs> of the border that were missing gave up on it. <laughs> Millie gave up. They said it is missing these two pieces. Today, came I home came for home for lunch. I spent a small amount of time. I found those two pieces. In fact, I didn't even realize you were in there on the puzzle. I found the two pieces and put them in. So I would like to say that I completed the entire border <laughs> of the puzzle. Okay, you can have that. He's, he's really getting good at putting puzzles together. I'm oh, fantastic. <laughs> Especially when I come and do the last two pieces and claim victory. <laughs> yes. so. You know, he's one of those people that 
hides the last piece in his pocket when it starts getting low. That I do. Just so he can put the last piece in. <laughs> he can tell by looking, you know, or actually he knows no matter what, he's got the last piece. Yes, I do. <laughs> so, hey, thanks for joining us and sending your good stories. McKinney, we love you. Uh, let's all just hang together, be strong. We're 200,000 strong. Yes, we are. So let's do it. See you soon. Bye-bye.